This house is a representation of vernacular architecture built by local people. Uh, no, um, no architects involved. My name is Margaret Gallagher and I was born into this three-roomed thatched cottage on the 26th of January at 9 o'clock on a Monday morning in 1942. And I've been here since and hopefully will remain here and been carried out by Pascal Connor, who's a local undertaker in a little brown box. This is my home and home is where the hearth is. The hearth is a fire on the floor, a very wide chimney so that the smoke uh, is, goes right out the chimney, it doesn't curl down and come back. You can see the plaster around the chimney area inside, that's a mixture of cow manure, pig's blood and hot lime which was the traditional plaster for this area for houses like this. I make my own bread and um, it using ordinary traditional method, ordinary flour, buttermilk, soda for raising agents sometimes put in and mostly put in eggs to it and some fruit and I uh, make a base pot oven here make it in my black pot oven hang on the pot oven over the fire, now that fire is not suitable for baking needless to say I would have a fire of turf because you need coals you don't get coals from logs, you no. get cinders then I would spread the coals evenly around the top of the lid if these were coals mm -hmm. or not, they're cinders, right. right round the lid all the way mm -hmm. and leave the bread on for about half an hour or whatever and that's it, I don't even have to look at it, I know how long it'll take and I know how, what heat has to be on the top of the oven to make sure that the bread is um, baked through. And who showed you how to do that? My mother died in 1952 but I was 10 when she died and uh, had been at home here with her for a long while so uh, you remember those things? Isn't that evenly distributed, yeah. well baked through? Yeah. You taste beautiful. that. Beautiful. It is beautiful. Beautiful. Isn't that a good cake? Mm -hmm. mm. I have to say, I believe in an open door policy. The doors never close. Fortunately, and I hope he bears with me that he um, has a lot of forbearance if he sees an image of himself being totally black. But <laughs> when the house starts to leak, when the thatch gets rotted, the first place it leaks is on the chimney brace. So hence, it's only in a is that colour by virtue of a leaky roof? But I'm sure His Holiness would understand. Not that he ever came from a thatch cottage, I can assure you. But then the King of North discovered that he could um, import flax from Russia a lot cheaper than he could get it from Northern Ireland. So thus the demise of flax going in Northern Ireland. Flax going in Northern Ireland. That's my MBE. I was awarded an MBE in 1994. Member of the British Empire for community work in Northern Ireland. It was a great treat to get to the palace and uh, mind you the Queen wasn't there the day I went which I thought was rather remiss of her. If she had been coming here I certainly would have been at home. <laughs> but I forgave her because her lovely son was there, Prince Charles, whom I had great time for. But you've met her several times since. Yes I have, yes. Robin well. coming in to say that there's no bread out for the East. He's the vanguard, he's the spokesperson for the rest of the birds. This is a painting of the house by Neilis, um, Neilis Flynn. Neilis lectures in uh, St. McCartan's College Beautiful. in uh, Monaghan. And he and his lovely wife came to visit with me and he gave me a painting of the house, which I love. Father's clogs. I had dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Blair. It's a lovely occasion. Mr. Blair is a very gracious gentleman. The big pottery was 150 years ago, um, in April, two years ago. And there's the original black, black brown, dark, and dark green stamp, all similar. After going out to work, I didn't get my first job outside the, the, my home until I was 48, I think. And uh, prior to that, I did quite an amount of breathing. My oh. father died in 1980. He was bedridden for many years. We were always sure he was going to be there. And uh, I loved carrying him. I knew when I was doing it, it was the most rewarding job ever I would do in my life. The hanging table, as you can see, is a feature in the house. It's made with leftover timbers of the, the roof timbers. And the house was made and it's secured to a steel bar, runs along that and doubled as a shutter. It came into prominence during the, after, after the 1916 rising when the curfew was introduced. 
meant you could have the table up over acting as a shutter over the window and we could have the candle light on the dresser or wherever. No, um, no architects involved, just people full of wisdom, older people, sages of yore I refer to them, to them as. They looked at the landscape, they selected a hollow because they knew that the um, prevailing westerly wind would absolutely wreck the, um, the house. So they built it as low down as possible, sheltered by the outlying hills of Kilopreen and Ora, and they hoped it wouldn't blow away, and thankfully so far it hasn't. And how old is the cottage? But there's no exact dating for a cottage like this, they just reckon it's over 200 years. The way the, the date cottages is by the landscape. If you look at the lime, a lime tree landscape, they know the cottage was owned by gentry and it would be of a certain age. And similarly with this house, the landscape is um, alder trees, which is a very poor man's trees, so what would have been a, a peasant cottage. Mm. Robin came in and off. He had a field day now. He was picking round them and he thought this was. Then I thought he went out, but he went down to the under room and got caught in the window down between the sash, you see. So he didn't come back and I thought he was hurt. But he comes back now, but he comes just as far as the bedroom door and he looks down, he does. You know, as much as to say, if you think I'm going down there, you have another. You know, it's so. You have to watch him do it to see it, you know. As much as to say, well, I'll certainly not be caught again in your own window. The lime wash comes from a further afield. We used to be able to go down to Carson's Quarry and get some uh, one little stone of lime, come home, put boiling water on it and a bag of blue, and lo and behold, you had enough lime to quite wash the house. But now it comes as a made-up mixture. So I did that um, one of the last good days. Um, the roof is attached about eight, seven, eight years ago. It's starting to wear already around the chimney area. The birds are a disaster on the roof because they pull out straws to do build nests, they pull out straws to do everything. And they nest in it, I mean the rain is nesting to the left hand side of the door there. And a sharp little madam she is. <laughs> they, it's de um, Devon straw that the house is taxed with. For man and I unfortunately is not getting the weather to grow any type of straw. So it has to be imported unfortunately. But